talking about building impact engine for charity and for the charity industry. So we have Yassine who will be who was actually participating in the Muslim Tech Fest Build Challenge. And so his team made a significant impact in the charity sector with their innovative approach. Let's give him a warm welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, guys, you suck. London was way louder. I'm going to try again. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, we still won. <laughs> um, okay. So, my name is uh, Yasin. I'm here representing Impact Engine. Uh, we actually won the MTF Build Challenge three months ago, and we've been working on this project over the last three months. Um, I'd just like to say thank you so much to Charity Right. They sponsored us uh, to be here today, and they've been doing incredible work with children all around the world. And we wouldn't be here without their support. So, a quick round of applause for Charity Right. You'll also see them running around with uh, pink capes, so please go and uh, feel free to talk to them. Uh, I want to say thank you to MTF as well. So uh, initially, we all started as strangers, and by bringing us all together, we've all become neighbors in Jannah. So let me introduce you to my neighbors. So in the middle, we have Noor. She's an accomplished uh, data consultant. Uh, she's uh, also a quantum ambassador at IBM, and she's also uh, a theoretical physicist. And she's told me that uh, she's the winner of Tech Women 100 Award. Uh, we have Kazim as well. He's standing over there with a the camera. Uh, he's our, our tech genius. Uh, he's also very senior in Goldman Sachs. So he's bringing all that wealth of being a software developer in, in the uh, investment banking industry and helping us build it. Myself, I have 10 years experience as a tech strategy consultant. And I'm bringing that to help the Ummah make an impact. What our mission is, is to measure impact, unlock potential, and amplify growth in the charity sector. And I'll explain to you what that means. So let me summarize the build challenge. Uh, charity Right are really uh, quite noble in how they did it. They focused on issues in the charity sector, not necessarily issues specific to Charity Right. And one of the biggest issues in all uh, charity companies is fundraising. The market is increasingly saturated. There's a thousand uh, global Muslim enterprises uh, doing charity work. And I don't know about you guys, but most Muslims, they only really donate in Ramadan. So there's 11 months left, and no money's coming in. So guys, uh, dig deep. Um, but that's now causing charities to think about how do they diversify income? Because when income's not coming in, when cash flow's not coming in, the impact is not being done. So it's not, uh, it's not the charities not being able to do work, it's people in vulnerable areas not getting the support they need. Uh, and one issue that we actually pose to Charity Right is that their niche is not measured. So Charity Right, they don't give food to children. Well, they do. But they give food to children in schools. So it does two in one, right? So they give food and they uh, guarantee an education as well. So what was our solution? It's an all-in-one solution. We said that if the charity starts measuring uh, against a universal framework, which the UN have created, specifically the SDGs, uh, they can actually start measuring the impact. And by measuring impact, they gain multiple benefits. Uh, the SDG framework exists. You guys can all Google it. If you search UN SDG, Sustainable Development Goals, there's, I think, around 12 uh, key areas that they focus on. And Charity Right is focused on zero hunger and quality education. Uh, by doing this, they gain access to the SDG network, which is multiple partnerships that they can create to increase their impact. Uh, they can leverage marketing, and ultimately, they can unlock more funds. So they're no longer reliant on me and you. They can get access to global funds in the millions. Uh, and that's what we were hoping to create. So over the last three months, we've been understanding the gap with Charity Right, and uh, we realized that it's not just Charity Right. We've spoken to other charity organizations. It's, it's, a, it's a phenomenon across the charities, right? All charities are focusing on the mission. Like when us guys give us money, or give them money, not give us money, when we give them money, we say, how far and when did you give uh, whatever you're doing to the people that we're doing? you'll notice that charities have started giving videos as evidence that your money has actually gone somewhere. And that's what they're focusing on. They're focusing on the day-to-day -day mission. There's limited resources. The resources, because the fund funds are becoming lower, uh, they're now focused on keeping the lights on. They're just focused on how do we reduce cost and still maximize impact. And some of the conversations that they've had there are really difficult. With Charity Art, right, they told us that they had a conversation that the money is now reducing. Do we give less to the schools? Do we feed less children? Or do we focus on giving better food to the children that we can serve? Now, it's not an easy conversation to have. Aligning to SDGs for charities, I don't know if anyone works in the charity sector, their data is a mess. It's all over the gaff. There's like 20 different uh, Excel versions of the same thing. It's, it's difficult to align the data in the charity to the SDGs. 
And without any of these things, they can't apply for any funding. So a lot of Muslim charities don't apply for any funding. They just rely on us guys in Ramadan, and that's all they do. Uh, but by doing this, they can actually have greater impact. So what does the impact engine do? Let's get to it. We focus on the mission. So we focus on uh, what is the charity's long-term vision? What are the things that they're trying to achieve? What's the day-to-day -day mission that they're doing? And how does that contribute to long-term impact? The first thing we do is we take their data, we understand it, we use a bit of AI, we align it to the SDGs. By aligning to the SDGs, they tick that tick box, so now they can at least start having those conversations with the global funds. But what we realized was there's also countries like Sudan. Sudan releases tenders to say, our country is having a lot of difficulty. We need a charity to come in and prove to us that they can deliver an impact. And by doing that, it, they ask for more things than just SDGs. So what the impact engine does, uh, on the first tier, we align things to SDGs. The second tier is we enhance the impact of the charity. So we take a, what, your, what the charity is doing today, and we enhance the story. So anyone that's reading it understands the charity is not just aligning to SDGs, there's more that they do. And then what we're doing is we've also, we're also unlocking forecasting for the charity industry. The forecasting has been locked away in like a lot of science and a, a lot of hearsay, and we're focusing on it on giving that as a service. So forecasting impact is our long-term goal. So this is an example, uh, it's very high level. We actually do have prototypes to show you guys uh, how we delivered this. Um, so the SDG, if we use the example that we did with Charity Right, we focused on how many schools uh, are they delivering meals to, what are the regions they deliver to, how many uh, regions within Bangladesh are they giving food to, what's the BMI over time? So how many charities record BMI over years? Sometimes it's, it's a data point that they don't consider. Um, and what nutritional information do they have? Now, if we focus on that nutritional information, what we've done in the impact engine is we focused on key things that we can take from charity and show that there's more maturity in it. So I'm gonna give you some facts about eggs that you probably didn't know, but maybe in the US you know this stuff, I don't know. Um, enhancing impact, so we, we focused on eggs and we said, what benefit does eggs have for zero impact and quality education? So eggs, they're high in protein, everyone that goes gym here knows that. Physical health, protein supports muscle, it's fine. But the cognitive function, choline in eggs is actually crucial for brain development. And when we couple that in with the WHO uh, research on ch child development over the ages of like zero to 10, uh, we start to see that the function of eggs, although it's a simple ingredient, actually has a crucial role for them. Uh, in, in education, their concentration and memory are also improved. And what I want to highlight is, initially right now, there are charities that aren't reporting on any of this. Like they know that eggs are good and eggs are healthy, but they don't, add the intention, the, the context of why eggs is important within the realm of these SDGs. And then finally what we're doing is we're looking at forecasting impact. And what we're doing is we're curating a, a knowledge base at the moment and we're feeding it into an AI engine. And we're trying to see, focusing on the impact long term, what are the th key things that we need to focus on? And each SDG has different things you need to focus on. So if we focus on uh, zero hunger and quality education, there's an impact on IQ. What happens to a child's IQ as they're eating or as they're getting meals over five or 10 years? What is the impact on EQ, their emotional intelligence? They're now less reliant, they're less worried about eating. They can actually form better human relationships. And what's the social dynamics? So now a family is less worried about sending their child to child labor or worried about their child not eating a meal. What, does that have, what, what impact does that look like over five or 10 years? So we're creating uh, a very specific knowledge base focused on impact, and hopefully we're going to unlock that for the charity industry. Our product roadmap, so we're going to expand our SDG library. We've already released uh, the zero hunger and quality education. We're going to have an impact dashboard that each client will have. Um, we're going to expand API integrations, and finally the AI forecasting module, we're going to develop that further. And this is news to me because I just found out today, but we also, uh, we got accepted into the Dean Developers uh, next build-a-thon batch, where we'll be focusing specifically on these things and delivering that over the next seven weeks. Yeah. So this will not be the last time you see me. Uh, if that's a good or bad thing, that's up to you. Um, we're proud to represent Tech for Good. Uh, the last talk about impacting millions and billions really resonates with us, and we're here to stay, and we're here to make a difference in the charity sector. Once again, thank you for Charity Right for their support. And if you want to scan this funky looking uh, QR code, that will take you to our site as well. Jazakallah.